obviously Joker has been a huge box office success, yeah. but there was some controversy around it. Did yeah. you see that coming as a producer when you were working on it? Not while we were making it, really. Um, there was a little pushback at times prior to getting it officially greenlit. You know, it's some concerns about some of the, you know, gun violence, um, understandably. But um, uh, once we got, you know, locked and loaded and the budget and up and running, every, everything was great. And the trouble didn't start brewing until we screened it really for the first time and just wanted to be very, very aware and careful given the subject matter. And... Uh, yeah, it's been it's been it's been interesting. I'm I'm just glad that we opened and mm-hmm. all quiet <laughs> quiet on the western front. It looks front. like the weight has been lifted. Yeah. <laughs> the box office has been amazing, yeah. so that's wonderful. But just that, um, you I'm know, sure you're people with beta breath that we yeah, just to make yeah, sure. Yeah, it was it was a nail biter mm-hmm. yeah. for sure. Mm-hmm. How did you react when the sort of de-aging of the actors came up as the way that that movie was going to be made? You know, we had Pablo Hellman from ILM as our uh, visual effects supervisor on Silence, mm-hmm. and he'd been reading about this project, and he's the one who approached us and said, I think we can do something. You know, there had been three, four years of R&D before we decided to make the movie, and we saw a test, and we saw what it could be, and took it from there. I mean, it was very, very very, very promising what we saw. And it was it was very, very easy technology to work with. You know, there was no head cams, no dots. No, I mean, you were free to do what you needed to do because it was all essentially done in post. The camera rigs were easy to work with. It, it didn't add time to our days. It was amazing. My film Joker, the themes in that film are important at this time in in the world. I know it's very controversial. I'm not trying to get into into that, but I was very um, moved by that script and, you know, have a lot of empathy for the themes going on in that film. And, and I think that it's important to really look at those those individuals who are suffering from mental illness and really try to find some love and empathy for these people. For me, the themes in that movie were empathy and, you know, feeling uh, sad and empathetic for that character. I do want to touch on the sort of power dynamic between the producer and the director. What do you do when they tell you something and you're just not sure that's going to happen? They want a three and a half hour movie. They have a very specific vision for their story. What do you do? How do you deal with that? Mine is, neither one of mine really takes no for an answer. (laughs) So I have to, I'm trained very well in the Scorsese filmmaking world where, you know, he's uncompromising and and extremely exacting. And um, so I have learned now over 16 years with him um, how to protect and cover for those those instances so I feel like silence was insane that mm-hmm. movie to get made from start to finish and I really I learned so much on that and I learned moving forward I knew what to look for and what to cover for uh, but but neither one wants to and I've only really produced for two Todd and, and Marty and um, you know they're they they will not compromise and you have to figure out it's our job to really keep them safe and protected in with their actor actors and cast and in you know uh, in their locations and their sets and making the days but maneuvering behind the scenes to somehow make it all make it all happen and that's that's how I that's how I work hi I'm Deborah Martin Chase hi I'm Dan Lynn I'm Peter Chernin hi I'm Charlize Theron and thank you for watching thanks so much for watching thank you for watching the Hollywood Reporter Roundtable Hollywood Reporter Roundtable Roundtables on YouTube on YouTube